Hello and welcome to FT Alphaville's first ever end of year award ceremony thing that we're doing on Company Time. I'm Cardiff Garcia. And I'm John McDermott. And together we're FT Alphaville's New York team. So John, it's been quite a year. Eurozone crisis plotted along. That's right. People took to the streets to rail against tyranny and inequality. And in Ohio to buy $2 waffle toasters. The U.S. lost its AAA credit rating from S&P. Whereas back home in the U.K. we did things a little bit more traditionally. Isolationism, spending cuts, and a royal wedding. Oh, come on. You're gloating now. You're Scottish anyways. There's been lots for us and our colleagues to blog about. That's right. And since we're such a generous bunch, we've decided to hand out awards to the people and events that really made the year. Should we get on with the awards? Yeah, let's give out some prizes. All right. Our first award is the 1989 Madrid Award for Summit of the Year. There have been eight European Union summits in 2011, and we've enjoyed absolutely none of them. However, they have set the cycle for the entire market, so in this award, we pick our favorites. The nominees are June, when everybody ganged up on Greece. The second, in October, when everyone ganged up on Italy. The third, in December, when everyone just ganged up on each other, and then Britain left. But the winner has to be the second March summit, which had everything. The Portuguese government collapsing, the Belgians, the Belgians were on the streets, the Finnish government said no to the EFSF, everybody asked what the EFSF was, and all the while Sarkozy and Cameron are trying to get Merkel to sign up to a war in Libya. Perfect. Absurd. Yeah, I guess the hard part of this award is the prize, right? Yeah. I guess, I guess we, you can't give a summit a prize, but instead we're going to send Herman van Rompuy a copy of the DVD in Bruges, should he want to escape. Next is the Irving Fisher Prize for the year's best prediction, named after the economist who said in 1929 that the stock market appeared to have reached a permanently high plateau just before it gave out, and you can guess where we're going with this. And the nominees are Dick Bove tells CNBC in January that we're now in a golden age of banking. At tape time, the S&P 500 financial sector index is down like 15% year to date. Mark Faber tells Bloomberg that long-term U.S. Treasuries are a, quote, suicidal investment. Every private sector macroeconomist in the world from November of last year to January of this year who said the U.S. economy was finally showing signs of a sustainable, robust recovery. But the winner, of course, is Meredith Whitney's prediction that this year we'd have 50 to 100 sizable muni defaults costing something like hundreds of billions of dollars. We weren't even close. Meredith, congratulations. We were going to send you as a prize the winnings from our leveraged three times Muni short ETF we bought earlier in the year, but, you know, really didn't make any money. So instead, we're going to send you a bunch of Bitcoins because it's the only currency we can afford to send anybody right now. Congratulations, Meredith. Our third award is the Joseph Cassano Award for Financial Innovation. This award goes to the wonks that came up with the most ingenious way of getting around their problems in 2011. The nominees are Groupon's Adjusted Consolidating Segment Operating Income or adjusted CSOI. From the company that brought you 60% off a, fo a foot clean using hungry goldfish came this ingenious piece of accounting which allowed them to not include online marketing spend, a rather large expense for an online marketing company. Wall Street Bank's use of debt valuation adjustments or DVAs. Now Cardiff, if your credit score deteriorated, would your bank balance increase? Don't think so. Well then you're obviously not a Wall Street Bank who this year took advantage of a long-standing accounting principle that meant when their credit deteriorated, their net income increased. Nice trick. Nice. Yeah. MF Global's repo to maturity trades. You're John Corzine. Hundreds of millions in the bank, a political career, and you're not Hank Paulson. What do you do? Take over MF Global, leverage it to the hilt, and invest in repo to maturity trades against European sovereign debt. What could go wrong? Counterparties. <laughs> Counterparties, my friend. But it's back to Europe for the winner. The EFSF leveraged CDO was just an exquisite piece of absurd financial engineering. It had everything. It had tranches. It was underwritten by a monoline. It had Sarkozy trying to explain it. And still nobody wanted it. So for the EFSF and its backers, we have a special prize for you. A Sino Forest consolidated note maturing in 2016. Hey, all right. Next is the Mohammed El Arian Prize for Media Ubiquity, named after the PIMCO co-CIO and CEO, whose media appearances and writings you can find 
on Reuters, Time, CNBC, The Wall Street Journal Online, CNN, the BBC, the FT's A-list, and of course, in guest posts on FT Alphaville. And the nominees are Nuriel Rubini of NYU, Rubini Global Economics, a pimpin' pad on the Lower East Side, and wherever Nassim Taleb is hanging out. Andrew Ross Sorkin of the New York Times Dealbook, CNBC Squawk Box, and Jamie Dimon's Living Room Sofa. But the winner, of course, is El Arian himself, so ubiquitous he can sponsor the award that he was nominated for and that he's now won. Congratulations, Mohammed. Your prize is that you get an invitation to submit a guest post to FT Alphaville telling us what you think about this award ceremony. Our fifth award is the S&P Award for Credit Rating Agency Folly, sponsored by S&P. Credit rating agencies tend to get a hard time. They normally just point out the things that are obvious to everybody and get paid for it. Seems like an easy and decent job for me. But this year, Standard & Poor's has outdone itself. So without further ado, here are the nominees for this award. First, Standard & Poor's for downgrading France's credit rating and then retracting the move due to a, quote, technical error, unquote. Second, Standard & Poor's for having its homework corrected by the US Treasury, of all people, and then going ahead and downgrading the sovereign anyway. Third, Standard & Poor's for replacing CEO Devin Sharma a few weeks after the downgrade, a move which had nothing, zip, nothing to do with the downgrade. Of course not. But the winner is French philosophe and eminent blowhard Bernard-Henri Lévy, who took to the Daily Beast this week to pen a devastating, a devastating critique of credit rating agencies. Here to present a dramatic reading of the piece, Monsieur Cardiff Garcia. <coughs> These rating agencies, these institutes to triple A's make the planet of finance quake and the real planet tremble. These oracles, these modern gods. Next is the How Does Bernanke Keep His Beard So Smooth Mystery of the Year. And the nominees are, where's the MF Global Money? Assuming they don't find it between now and when this thing is finished being edited. How much exposure to Europe do U.S. banks really have? And please don't cite us that nonsense from the FFIEC. Crap in, crap out. How did the Libyan rebels lose an oil transporting tanker called the Equator? Seriously, how do you lose a tanker? Not like a set of keys or something. But the winner, of course, is does Sino Forest actually own any trees? And the prize for every Sino Forest convertible debt holder who's about to be defaulted on is a bonsai forest. They're on their way. And finally, the Paul McCartney died in a fiery car crash, recurring rumor that never seems to be true award. The nominees are, China and the other BRICS will contribute to the bailing out of Europe. Sure, because that makes sense. The European Central Bank will find a way to lend money to Europe through the IMF. Wells Fargo will buy Morgan Stanley. The government will shut down tomorrow if the Republicans and Democrats don't hammer out a deal on whatever. And the winner, I have to put this delicately, is will a hedge fund run by a guy you don't want to call Stevie ever be investigated by the SEC and or federal prosecutors on charges related to insider trading? We have no idea. Seriously, we have none. None at all. None at all. None. No. And it's, it was equally tough to give a prize out for this one because the FT censors already told us that we're close enough to being sued as it is. So we'll just leave it there and say that's the end of the award ceremony. But before we go, John, I want to ask you if you have any predictions for next year. I do. All right. I think yields will be the inverse of prices. Sounds about right. I think correlations will probably stay somewhere between negative one and one. I think volatility will go up and down. All right. Yeah. Well, I think that's exactly the type of insight that our uh, the readers of FT Alphaville have come to expect from us. But just in case, tune in next year to see if these things come true. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year, guys. See you next year. That doesn't make sense. Happy New Year and see you next year. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> whatever, man. Have a good one. See you next year. Yeah. I won't be um, there. I won't be there. I'll be off doing something else. <laughs> but see this guy all throughout next year. Can you resist? Can you resist? We're done.